Fire safety design in buildings can be delivered in a number of different ways. One of the ways to deliver that design is via the qualitative design review process which is embodied in BS7974. They can also be delivered by use of approved document B or BS9999. The QDR process and in VIA 7974 is reserved normally for complex designs of large buildings with populations normally large but also with difficulties such as disabled access in airports and railway stations. It can also be delivered for high-end fire risk sites such as process related or, or off offshore, or offshore oil rigs and if adopted early in the design then the QDR process can secure improved safety but also cost benefit analysis and good value for the customer. The QDR process is best delivered when a lot of stakeholders are involved. This would involve normally an independent chair who's a chartered fire engineer, a fire engineer who's presenting a trial design and various people from the client organisation, the insurers and also design team members such as mechanical and electrical disciplines, architectural, telecom, structural and others, other specialists who may be suitable for the design under consideration. What the QDR process permits is an evaluation of the whole building life cycle through from concept right through to demolition. So there can be meetings, separate meetings about the overall final design, there can be meetings about discrete topics of that design, there can be meetings about construction site safety, about maintenance, about developing the management plans, fire safety management plans for that building. What this delivers is an integrated safety throughout the whole building design life cycle. Once the design team and the QDR team is assembled, then discussions can take place around the design for life safety, building regulations, compliance. But also there can be discussions about asset protection, mission criticality, business continuity, reputation, and also environmental considerations as well with respect to fire. That may influence the geometry of the design, it may influence the fire precautions that are specified, it could change the materials of the building that were previously considered at concept or by the client before the design team were appointed. Other, other factors which can be included in the QDR design, fire service access, hose reach within buildings that are large such as baggage halls in airports or railway depots where you wouldn't normally need to consider them applying the code. In order to agree the parameters for the design, the design team will agree some acceptance criteria. And that is normally, as a baseline, the tenability criteria for people to escape. But there may be other criteria in terms of improving the compartmentation or providing sprinklers and target them on areas of fire risk or to use a smoke clearance system or smoke extract system to get the business back up and running fairly shortly after a fire. The QDR process itself is a flowchart and this is contained in BS7974 and it's fairly simple to follow but there are a lot of complex inputs that can go into that depending on the particulars of a, a design. The first port of call would always be the QDR workshop and there'll be some preparatory work done for that in terms of risk assessment, in terms of understanding the client requirements, insurer requirements and assembling a trial design which will sketch out what the fire precautions are and the understanding of the fire engineer to bring to that meeting. That is then interrogated by the team and there's a QDR tracker, a set of minutes, which are then re-evaluated at the end to make sure there's round table agreement on those actions. After that meeting the fire strategy is written, there'll be fire strategy drawings and there can be other fire documents produced such as schematic drawings for fire mains or the cause and effect matrix for the fire alarm design and at that meeting there will be fire scenarios developed and perhaps a fire curve developed bespoke for the project. The fire scenarios 
are where the design team would agree a worst case fire to size or a worst fire location within the building and then the, the design will need to demonstrate that the design remains safe given those conditions and that's where the fire precautions can be adopted and implemented in the design to make sure that those conditions are satisfied and that the people can escape safely. QDR workshops are typically followed by some method of quantitative assessment. That can be simply escape calculations, it can be smoke modelling which can be done by hand calculation, it can be done by spreadsheet analysis or full computational fluid dynamics CFD where the fire is modelled and the, 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 it's three dimensionally modelled in a building and it hits the ceiling, spreads along the ceiling, down the walls and you can see in real time occupants escaping with the smoke development in the model. These results are then presented to the QDR team once the results are complete. The ideal situation is that they are successful and there is a sufficient safety margin. The British Standard recommends 20% but the QDR team will agree the criteria and it's subject to the building complexity and the population at risk so a higher safety margin might be more appropriate where you have lots of disabled people and where you have a lot of management dependency rather than a system-led design. On occasion the results will not be satisfactory and there is a route in the QDR process to go back to the QDR team and reassess the design in a qualitative stage where the design can be reconceived or things can be changed and then that can be tested quantitatively until you get a successful result. And once you have a successful result, you then can, have a, a, you can then agree the fire strategy with the relevant authorities, building control and also the fire and rescue service, and then the design can progress, the build can, co can, uh, can progress as well, and the QDR process doesn't finish at that stage. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, it can follow all the way through construction, through maintenance and management of the building and also through to demolition and change control of materials or design changes for the configuration of the building are all things that can be routed through the QDR process and there can be changes of management approach and there can be changes to layouts and re re retention of the existing ownership, there can be extension, there can be partial demolition and all these things can be revisited in the QDR process because the building was originally intended for the fire engineered design. In summary, the QDR provides the client with confidence that the design can be built, it can be managed and that that, could, that is done cost effectively. There will also be a full consideration of issues and from the QDR there can be HAZOP studies there can be probabilistic analyses as well as the quantitative assessments to underpin the safety of the design. Complex designs tend to have defence in depth in terms of their fire precautions. So there will be the fire alarm and the fire safety management, the compartmentation, smoke control, sprinklers and there may be other fire precautions as well, mist systems for example. The workshops themselves, they should be workshops and not presentations. The team should be collaborative and not adversarial. The QDR process should be continual. If it is disjointed, then safety gaps can emerge and the client confidence and the building design can suffer. And the QDR process itself should be very visible so that people understand that that is the fire safety approval method for the project. So th thank you for listening, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation and I hope also that you make use of the QDR process and benefit from it, from all the insights from the design team and the experience of the people, from all angles of the table, from the client side, the insurers, the design team members and also interfacing directly face to face with the authorities and developing a relationship with those people.